Welcome back to another video of Google Kubernetes Engine where I'm going to focus on another cool and nice feature of GCP. I would say a must needed skill if you want to be an efficient Google Cloud engineer. Yes, I'm talking about Google's very own command line interface known as gCloud that can be used to interact with GCP services from the terminal. We can use the gCloud command line interface either in GCP's cloud shell environment where gCloud SDK is pre-configured or we can install this gCloud tool locally in our machine to interact with GCP resources and services. In this hands-on lab, we will get to know how to interact with GCP resources through this gCloud command line tool. And also, at the end of the video, we will learn how to install gCloud SDK in our local machine so that we can connect to the same GCP resources from our machine. We can interact with GCP services and resources either from the GCP console or through gCloud command. However, I would suggest it would be better for you if you expertise yourself with commands instead of graphical user interfaces. Working with commands from the terminal will not only improve your typing speed but also make you more productive. Let's try to work with these gCloud commands from the Cloud Shell environment first. Open a Cloud Shell session by clicking on the icon in the top right hand corner of the console. If your Cloud Shell is not activated, then activate it right now. After Cloud Shell gets activated, we can use this terminal to execute gCloud command. Let's first set our default compute region and zone with gCloud config set command, followed by compute slash zone and then mention the zone we want as default. Say for example, it's central 1A. If you don't know what compute region and compute zones are, then let me tell you. Every GCP resource lives in regions and zones. A region is a specific geographical location where we can run our GCP resources. Each region has one or more zones. For example, the US 1 region is located in central United States and it has zones like US Central 1A, US Central 1B, US Central 1C, etc. Also, every resource we interact with in GCP belongs to a specific project. So to interact with GCP resources, we must create a project first, then set that project as a default project. To create a project from the terminal, type gcloud project create command followed by an id for this project project id here could be anything that must start with lowercase letters and 6 to 30 characters long underscore is not allowed in project id optionally we can mention a name for this project with option name if not then the name of this project would be the same as the project id Mentioning the project ID is compulsory. So we created a project. Now let's make this project as a default project so that all the GCP resources we are going to deal with are associated with this project unless we specify a different project. And making this project as default project can be done with gcloud config set project command followed by the project ID that we want to make as default project, which is in this case, our newly created project. We can also check what projects exist in the system with gcloud project list command. Now let's play with this gcloud command to deal with GCP services and resources. At this point, we want to create a Kubernetes cluster with gcloud command. Well, creating Kubernetes cluster or any other resources can be done either with GCP console or gcloud command. We will see both. First, let's see how to create a Kubernetes cluster from the console. First go to cluster page of Kubernetes engine service. As this is a new project, billing needs to be enabled for this project. We can't use this service in the project until we enable billing here, so let's enable it. So billing is enabled 
also the Kubernetes engine is getting enabled. Wait for a few moments until Kubernetes engine is enabled. So it's enabled now. Let's create our first Kubernetes cluster by clicking on Create Cluster button. Let's name our cluster My First Cluster. I want this cluster to reside in US Central 1 region. We will leave everything as it is. Number of nodes that belong to this cluster is 3. If everything is OK, then we can click on Create button. Our cluster will be created within a few minutes. That's how we can create Kubernetes cluster using GCP console. Now, we will do the same thing with a gcloud command. To create Kubernetes cluster from the shell, type gcloud container clusters create command, followed by the name of the cluster, which is, for example, my second cluster, and press enter. Our cluster will be created within a minute. Notice one thing. While we executed the command to create Kubernetes cluster, we neither mentioned the region to use nor the number of nodes that belong to this cluster. Well, if we skip this information while creating the cluster from the terminal, then the default value will be taken which is 3 as number of nodes, where the US Central 1A will be taken as default zone. Once the cluster gets created, we verify whether the cluster is created or not with gcloud container clusters list command. We can also see the same result from the console. So we see how to deal with GCP services and resources with GCP console and gcloud command. However, to become an efficient cloud engineer, as I mentioned earlier in this video, try to make your hands dirty with commands instead of graphical user interface. The gcloud commands we executed so far are done from the GCP terminal. However, it would be more convenient if we execute this gcloud command from our own machine. And to execute gcloud command from our own machine, we need to install gcloud SDK first in our system. So let's do it. The installation may vary according to the operating system you have. My one is a Windows operating system. So if you also have a Windows operating system, then you can follow the installation process here. Or if you have a different operating system, like Mac or Linux, then go through the official documentation of GCP to check the installation process of gcloud SDK. So let's see how to install gcloud interface in Windows operating system. First, download the Google Cloud SDK installer. And then open that installer to install the gcloud SDK. Go through the installation process by clicking on the Next button. It will take several minutes to complete the installation. Once done, you can keep all the options checked if you want to leave them empty and press on the Finish button. Now open your favorite terminal. I use Git Bash personally. In this terminal, we first need to execute gcloud auth login command to verify our identity to Google. Once press enter, within a few seconds a window will open in your browser where you have to log into the Google account that is associated with your GCP account. Here, you just need to allow the access that will let you interact with GCP resources from your machine. That's it. We have successfully logged into our GCP account from our machine. From now on, we can execute any kind of gcloud commands as we do in the GCP's terminal. For example, let's change our default zone to US Central 1B, 
with gcloud config set command with compute slash zone followed by the zone name. And then let's set our default project with gcloud config set project command. Once done, let's create another Kubernetes cluster with gcloud container clusters create command followed by the cluster name, which is in this case, my third cluster. If we want, we can verify the cluster from GCP console to make sure everything works fine. So that's all about gcloud command line interface in a nutshell. We will see more use cases of this gcloud command in later videos.